I would like to introduce our first speaker. Dr. Aina Wolf MK is a member of Israel's Knesset and chair of the Independence Faction. Uh, she serves on the Foreign Affairs and Defense Education and Finance Committees. Previously, Dr. Wolf served as a senior fellow with the Jewish People Policy Planning Institute, a foreign policy advisor to Vice Prime Minister Shimon Peres, and a strategic consultant with McKinsey and Company. Dr. Wolf served as an intelligent office, intelligence officer in the Israel Defense Forces and holds a BA in Government and Fine Arts from Harvard, an MBA from INSEAD in France, and a PhD in Political Science from the University of Cambridge. She's also the author of two books, and she will be very pleased to address an audience which, unlike in the Knesset, will not interrupt her during the middle. Please welcome MK Dr. Inat Wolf. invited by APAC to address at a breakfast uh, a senior delegation of members, Democratic members of Congress from the United States headed by uh, their chair. And I was asked to give a talk about the history of Zionism. Now, I looked at it as a very straightforward mission. I uh, explained Zionism without thinking that I'm on a mission uh, to do something about it. I explained Zionism the way I was taught it, the way I saw it, a uh, movement of national liberation, the assumption of responsibility by the Jewish people, uh, the remarkable idea that was followed by young people from around the world to create the country, uh, the utopian visions that were associated with it, and so forth. At the end of the talk, the head of the delegation, a senior member of the uh, Democratic Congress, asks me the question, he says, the way you describe Zionism, it sounds very nice. Why does it have such a bad reputation? And in a way, that was a very shocking question to me, that someone would find it odd that what I viewed as a very straightforward description of the history of Zionism would be considered in a way so jarring to people who have been accustomed to, as he described it from Google, to have it associated with all that is evil in our world, all the values that we reject. So, first of all, we really need to acknowledge that there is a fundamental problem that what Zionism is, before we need to reimagine it and refresh it and rethink it, what Zionism is, is good. And the fact that 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 itself is not the case today. That is a battle that has to be fought even before we talk about reimagining Zionism for the future. I want to discuss, though, why I think there is a certain crisis or a crisis of misunderstanding of Zionism and why many people consider it irrelevant for our today's world. The reason is because Zionism was a movement of national liberation, it required, unlike other movements of national liberation, it required the two things that all other movements had. It required what all other national liberation movements had to begin with, land and people. Zionism is unique among national liberation movements that it had to create the two. It had to create the land and it had to create the people. Literally get the people to the land and purchase the land, acquire it, settle it, and ultimately fight for it. So the things, the ideas that have to do with land and people have become, for the first 50, 60, I would say even 100 years of Zionism, they became the defining ideas of Zionism, and over time, we began to confuse them with Zionism. Aliyah, settling the land, serving in the military, so fighting to defend the land. All of the things that were associated with bringing people and land so that national sovereignty and national liberation would be possible, we identified them as the essence of the national liberation movement. Now, this phase is clearly over. Uh, the phase of Aliyah is over in the sense that there are no more plane loads of Jews to rest 
rescue in the middle of the night and bring to Israel. If people make Aliyah now to Israel, they do so on an individual basis. Israel today is home to the largest and pretty much the only growing Jewish community. So in terms of getting the people here, we could say we're pretty much done. We're there. We could always do a little more, but check mark on that. In terms of the land, we bought it. We got it by United Nations mandate. Then we, we settled it. We fought for it. We acquired it. We conquered it. If anything, right now, Israel is in the process of receding from some of that land. So even though that is one of the most contentious issues, still the question of the acquisition of more land so that the Jews can have a place where they are sovereign, that is over as well. Because these two things are over, there is a sense of crisis that Zionism is over. But these were not Zionism, and they were never the essence of Zionism. They were merely the basis from which Zionism could begin to operate. And ultimately, Zionism was always about the utopian ideals that came with it, about the fact that the renewal of sovereignty of the Jewish people would, be, would mean something remarkable for the world at large, but also for the Jewish and specifically for the Jewish people. What does it mean to have moved from a people whose institutions were built over centuries and millennia for non-sovereign existence into a sovereign existence? Now, I have some pretty radical ideas about what that should mean, but maybe that will be for the second part? Sounds good to me. Absolutely. So this is, in short, why I think there is a misunderstanding on the crisis of where we are today, and I think Rather than a misunderstanding of the crisis, this is an opportunity to truly begin to cut to the core of what Zionism was always meant to be about. Thank you. Thank you.